This brings us to uh, synergy and franchising um, in the in the movie industry. So basically, what synergy is, or cross market promotion, is basically um, you know you have these different commodities that are sold, bought and sold in different markets, but they contain some of the same intellectual properties or are owned by the same entities. So cross market promotion or synergy, okay, could could be could be this, right? You make a, a tally toy and you sell it, right? It's promoting, it's promoting South Park content and characters and intellectual properties um, in a different product market. It's not the same product market, okay? Um, which is really important. Or you, you know, um, make a soundtrack to the Book of Mormon, okay? You're essentially monetizing and marketing the Book of Mormon in a different product um, market. And it basically allows, you know, this cross market promotion, meaning, and, and you know, who was the king of this was, you know, Walt Disney, uh, George Lucas, who figured out that you could make a movie and make a character and then exploit them in various marketplaces, which then buttressed and increased the overall value of that character uh, in the first place. Oh, it's beautiful right now, at least in the shade. Um, so it's a safe bet, you know, it allows you to exploit the recognition of Luke Skywalker, uh, of Eric Cartman, of Tally. Um, but the, the, the key here with synergy or cross market promotion is that by buying a, a, a Tally doll, by buying a DVD, by buying a t-shirt, um, you're essentially marketing South Park as a brand, as a commodity. And there's a lot of value, there's a lot of, of value in that. Okay. You know, toys, t-shirts, all that stuff, cheesy poofs, poofs. So who really popularized this was Walt Disney. He figured that out very early with Mickey Mouse. Um, but the first like we really want to think of a great example is actually Saturday Night Fever. Um, the soundtrack was more popular, the John Travolta disco movie. The soundtrack was actually way more popular than the movie itself. But sales of the soundtrack helped to sell the movie and eventually made the movie, you know, uh, a pretty, pretty, pretty big hit at the, at the box office. But George Lucas was the dude who really figured this out with films, with Star Wars, was like he trademarked every single damn character name, everything in there from, from Droid to Luke Skywalker to Jawa, and he owned, owned that shit, you know, exclusively. He figured out that you could take a popular movie and you could really, really sell it in a diverse product markets, toys, bed sheets, toothbrushes, etc. So it went beyond just in the soundtrack. It went all the way to every potential product market where you could license. So that's, those are the three architects of, of the mall, the Walt, Saturday Night Fever, and uh, George Lucas and Star Wars. Um, Tally, who's had a real, um, you know, a real big resurgence in the new seasons of South Park, was actually, you know, a character that was made by Matt and Trey to comment. So they tried to make the lamest character that they could think of, and it was a towel who likes to get high. Um, it's because Early on, and still, you know, Comedy Central was, with its first successful product, really pushing South Park commodities, action figures, toys, stuffed characters, shirts, towels, etc. So they uh, made Tally as a representation of the critique of the overmarketization and commercialization of of the show itself. So, uh, you know, South Park is known for doing product placement and product integration. So the differences are, at least in the film industry, is product placement is when a can of Coca-Cola is on the set of your film. It's just there, and the logo is apparent. Coca-Cola is paid to have their logo in the film. So, um, you know, that's, that's what product placement is. The, you know, the logo appears, the product appears, it's in the film set. That is paid for by the company, Coca-Cola, who, or whomever. Then there's product in integration. That's when the products are incorporated into the narrative, okay? Where the companies are in the narrative, the iPad, 
the Dr. Pepper in the agnostic, uh, you know, episode, Netflix, uh, in, uh, in, um, you know, in an episode, whatever it is, right? Like you're incorporating, um, these products into the actual storyline. They're, they're part of the, the storyline themselves, you know, um, which is different than just having something appear, just having a product appear in episodes. It's integral to the storyline. And typically, you know, unless it's strictly a parody, uh, this is going to be some form of a license. You know, unless they're making a parody of it, um, then, you know, so something like Papa John's uh, Gluten Quarantine Center, right, that could be maybe considered considered a parody but some other instances where they're exploiting like ipad you know that carmen really wants in an episode that may not be parody itself right that and they may need a license to, to do that stuff i mean look at something like stick of truth i mean a, a video game that they've marketed i mean fully marketed south park storyline they made ac- action figures you can buy you can buy it you can own it you know you know you know, uh, pieces of it. Um, I mean, this shows you like stick of truth shows you in the frac- in fractured butthole. I mean, it just shows you like how you can push, you know, cross market promotion, how you can push a core intellectual property self sub park across various markets to enhance the value of the franchise itself. Cause South park like star Wars, like Indiana Jones is a franchise. Okay. So we're going to end with Obama wins. Um, again, we're kind of talking in this about the Electoral College. So you have, it goes back to our political philosophy debates or ideas where, where they, the boys talk um, you know, about uh, swing states and the Electoral College. So there's a little bit of a political element here. But really what, the, what this is, is uh, Lucas, George Lucas had recently sold Star Wars to Disney and the main part of the storyline that we kind of find out as the narrative pushes along is that you know basically China um, China is going to try to protect Disney from fucking up star from fucking up Star Wars so they didn't, they didn't think that it would be the right home for Star Wars given its content and given how um, Disney sanitizes things like I've heard that now that they own um 20th century which makes the family guy is that they the family guy has episodes have changed um in in many ways um to accommodate for like the the Disney the Disney vibe you know um the family vibe which is which is pretty pretty interesting um but just think about this how is this a commentary on synergy and franchise I mean you look at (laughs) You see the uh, the ad ats and the Tie Fighters at at the Disney at the Palace. You know, I mean, just kind of think think about you know what Disney does, how Disney makes things, and and what does Disney make that's original? Because almost everything that Disney owns and exploits in the marketplace, Disney has bought or as Disney has uh, adapted from fairy tales and from the public 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 domain. And have they ruined Star Wars? Have they fucked it up by releasing a new Star Wars every three to six months? So, I mean, you should have watched this. We kind of see, like, all the things going on in this episode. Um, Again, lampooning Disney and George Lucasfilm for, you know, all of the cross-licensing it does, the use of synergy, franchising, and also ruining the the product. So... um, you know, just sort of think about how this ties into uh, some of the other episodes that we've watched that addresses these industries, um, etc. So I think, you know, that kind of ties us up. This kind of brings us to the end of week seven. Uh, you know, we're talk, talking about film, music, and sort of cross-promotion, how these industries work, how they work with South Park, how the boys make money off of this, um, all of this, you know, and... Um, yeah, show you a little bit about industry structure and all that stuff. Hope you're doing well. Hope you all are taking care, breathing clean, enjoying life to the best that you can during this pandemic. Um, Farmer Joe here. I'm out. I'll check you on the flip.
Oh, fuck. That was a struggle, muggle. <laughs>